so much, everyone, for coming so early this morning. My name is Vina Lustado, and I am the CEO and founder of Soul House Design. I'm from Southern California in a little town called Ojai. And I have a few questions to ask from the audience. One, um, who is interested in housing availability and affordability? Great. How about who is frustrated with bureaucracy and permit processing as a whole? Excellent. <laughs> and third, who is concerned about sustainability and our environmental impact on the earth? Excellent, okay. So these are topics that are really passionate in my heart and things that I've really tried to address in my professional journey when I started my design firm, Soul House Design. And I wanted to share my personal journey and how I've come from the corporate architecture world when I was working for decades in commercial and residential architecture to finding my own, own firm and how I was able to address these issues um, during the 10 years that I've had my firm for Soul House Design. So I'm excited to share some possible solutions with you in addressing these issues and I wanted to go through how I went about that. So about 2012, ten, about nine years ago, um, I heard about the tiny house movement. Who has heard about tiny houses and the movement? Impressive, okay. So 12 years ago, 10 years ago, it really wasn't in the mainstream. Um, when I founded my company in 2010, I was really wanting to find a way to align my values of sustainability and affordability in my own projects. And most of my clients weren't, environmentalism wasn't really high on that, their priority list. And I wanted to have a project that um, really addressed those things. So I found a way to build and design my own tiny house that I was able to um, minimize my expenses and impact on the earth. So I actually built and designed my tiny house, which is about 200, actually 140 square feet. So if you can imagine a parking space that's about 10, 10 feet wide by 20 feet long, that's the size of my tiny house that you see on the screen. So it's on a travel trailer. You see uh, the wheels below, which is covered by the deck. And I lived in this for about eight years and I was off the grid completely with solar panels and gray water systems, and also propane for my hot water heater and a fireplace. I had a beautiful fireplace um, within the structure, and I just loved living in it. I thought it was just like the most wonderful experience in connecting with the earth and minimizing my expenses during that time. And since then, I discovered a way to build my tiny office so on the left is my tiny house, and on the right is my tiny office. And so by joining the two together, I created a deck, a bigger deck that was modular, that allowed me to maximize my living space, because in California and pretty much Nevada, a lot of places, you can live outside most of the year. And so that allowed for expanding my living space, almost doubling the square footage, um, with a living room, even a dining area, and it was modular uh, building with the deck, so I can move it freely, and it was mobile, and it allowed you to have flexibility in your life as your jobs change or your parents get older and you need to relocate, so it allowed for maximum flexibility. And as I said, I live off the grid. Both my units, tiny house and tiny office, was completely on solar with uh, batteries that allowed me to be completely off grid for about three or four days, even before, even during thunderstorms and times when there was no sun. And it minimized my expenses. I had no utility bills, um, minimal impact on the earth, and the interiors of my tiny house were completely non-toxic, no off-gassing, everything was healthy because there's a lot of clients that I have who are chemically sensitive and I was very aware of that. So after my journey, 
I really wanted to come up with a housing solution that was addressing the issues of permitting, which is always very difficult and costly and very time, time consuming. And I discovered a way to have prefabricated structures be permitted with the state. Uh, California, it's called housing community development. So instead of having permitting within the local jurisdiction, which takes months if not years to permit, HCD allows less than a month of complete permitting. And also the construction can take place during that time frame. So they're all completely maximized during the time so that you can minimize the construction and the permitting time within a month. Again, minimal footprint, on the land, there's a lot less construction waste during the factory building because it's all very controlled. You don't have to consider weather where, you know, there's a lot of rain or snow. You can just build in the factory all year long. Um, the structure itself is fire resistant. So there is a lot of fires in California and beyond. And I really wanted to address that. So the exterior has a metal standing roof of Galilu, and the exterior siding is a cement board siding from hardy panels. Um, and the, a lot of the fires that start inside the house is from attic spaces that are open, so embers fly in. So I have a vaulted ceiling, so there's no opening in the, the attic space. And again, there's completely healthy interiors, no off-gassing within the interior finishes of, of the house. So the application here with my client that we're building this for right now is in Southern California. Um, I think ADUs, accessory dwelling units, are really popular right now. Um, how many are familiar with ADUs or accessory dwelling units? Okay, so it's a guest house or a second dwelling to the main house. So it allows you to build a second unit so that, oops, It allows you to build a second unit from the main house so that extended family members can live on the same property. You can rent it out for additional income for your mortgage. Um, you can have multi-generational living. So if your parents are getting older and you don't wanna put them in a home, they can live with you in the back of the rear of the property, but still be completely independent. Your kids, if you're you know, college eight kids need a place to stay because they can't afford anything in the market, they can live in a tiny house and all still within the same parcel. And again, this allows for, I'm sorry? Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> this allows for increasing the housing stock in the market because I think it's really um, a dire situation that we have throughout the country to be able to provide additional housing that's affordable. And also it allows everyone in the parcel to share resources like um, you know, cars and bicycles and um, gardens so that no one is taking individual responsibility for taking care of the land. So here's an example of some renderings that we generated for the prefab. It's the exterior here with uh, the deck being a primary part of the living space. And we have the shading structure, so it allows you to live outdoors during the summer, have complete shade, and then it retracts open during the winter so that you can allow sun in. And you know, when you're outside, you're a lot more connected to nature and maximize the use of the, the property with um, outdoor living. And again, we have a lot of sustainable, resilient materials on the exterior, such as the metal roof, the cement board siding, and low dual E pane windows and doors, and again, healthy materials inside. The floor plan that you see there is the footprint of 26 feet long by 10 feet wide, which is the maximum we have 
dimensions allowable for the road, for it to travel. Uh, the length of 26 feet can actually be increased to 40 feet. And you can attach modules next to each other to increase the size of the units. This one specifically is the smallest module, so then the whole thing is fabricated in the factory without doing any additional work on the site, which increases the time and increases the cost. So this unit has a very open space plan. It has the bedroom on the left-hand side. It has the bathroom on the right-hand side. And the great room in the center is the living room and the kitchen and the dining. So it's multifunctional. This is the interiors of the space. Um, on the left side is the bedroom. It's really important that the bedroom is on the main level because as we get older, it's hard to use the stairs and ladder. So this is completely on the ground floor. Um, there is a lot of storage in the room with loft above the bed, as well as the platform below the bed. So you can place your clothes and your comforters and pillows and shelving on the wall. And then on the right-hand side is the bathroom. Again, it's really important to have accessibility for the space as we get older, for instance. Um, the tub is just a shower. You don't have to step over a tub. And it's as open as possible with just a clear glass panel and storage, again, for the base cabinet below the vanity. And again, lots and lots of natural light because that's really important for a space to feel bigger, reflecting white space as opposed to dark spaces that absorbs light and makes it feel smaller. So this concept for a tiny house co-housing concept uh, is regarding the single family zoning that I think is quite prohibitive at certain uh, places in our country. Um, typically, single family zones only allow for two dwellings, the main house and for the guest house, which is the ADU. What I'm proposing to increase, again, the housing stock is to provide multifamily more than three units or more than two units, let's say five units. Um, so you're able to place tiny houses on the back of the property and enable more people to live on the same parcel. So in this example, you can have two tiny houses at the very back of the property, share the courtyard space, outdoor living space, and have your extended family live there with you. You can also have your children, again, who are um, able to purchase this tiny home and basically own it outright and take it with them even if they decide to move to another state, if they change their jobs. So there's a lot of flexibility in the solution so that as your life changes, then you can adapt with your living situation. And a lot of people I'm finding is my clients don't want to live in the big house. They want to be able to rent the big house and move into the small house or the smaller ADU. Um, and so that allows them to increase their mortgage or increase their income to mitigate the mortgage cost. And the garage that's existing on the property um, can also be converted to an ADU so that if you count the number of dwellings on this property, which is a typical single family lot, you can then have four dwelling units. And so I think that really increases the housing stock that's, uh, that could be available. And this is an even bigger concept called the tiny house community. Um, I think this works really well for a solution for um, retired elderly housing. So, you know, I, I find there's a lot of people, many are women, who are nearing retirement age, who want to live with their friends, who don't want a lot of stuff. They want to travel more, have more adventures, not be subjected to, you know, tied down with a big mortgage. So this allows them to live with many people on the property. Um, they can have a community garden, a gathering space for community. They can have, you know, parties and um, have their family and friends over in the bigger community space. Um, ample parking for each unit and 
additional uh, structures to have shared storage and laundry, for instance. So it's the idea of sharing resources and having a, a shared parcel that allows them to live with like-minded people. So I think that's a really good solution for the population like the baby boomers who are coming into retirement that is really difficult at this point because they can't afford anything in the market at, at this time. So I wanted to really minimize my presentation and open up the you know, audience questions. So I'm more than happy to address. So a big part of the obstacles to doing something like this is the local zoning and local code requirements, right? Correct. Another addition with, um, thank you, uh, with, you know, a second kitchen, for example, right? Correct. And what's interesting is, like, in the Florida Building Code, the, the Florida Building Code allows for a second kitchen, but it's, it's nipped at the local ordinance level, where they say, no, you can't have a second kitchen. And uh, so my question to you is, have you been able to have local zoning uh, laws changed as a result of your proposals? So in California, there's a crisis for housing. So there's a state mandate by the governor of California to minimize the impediments for developing ADUs. So there's many aspects that they basically deleted from many requirements. One is parking. They can have street parking. They don't have to have a carport. It could just be not on the property. The second one is the minimum lot size. You can have um, any lot size and be able to put an ADU on the property. They do need to meet uh, minimum setbacks in the rear, which is instead of 20 feet typically, it's now four feet all the way around on the rear and on the side. Um, and there's impact fees that are deleted completely, which could be 15,000. Um, and the fees for permitting is very prohibitive. So typically, before the state mandate, it was 30,000, 20 to 30,000 just to permit an ADU, which was you know, a third or a quarter of the budget, usually for many clients. So to eliminate the impact fees and development fees was a big step. Um, now, my question to you regarding the kitchen and not being able to have two kitchens on one parcel, are you not able to have an ADU on the property, or like two dwellings? In, in most Florida jurisdictions, they don't allow it. Um, that's like, interesting like because I, that's I designed a house for, for myself and my family with the intent of uh, having my parents stay downstairs. I had 2,500 square feet upstairs, 1,500 downstairs. I could not have a second kitchen downstairs. Now, the way I got around it is I had a microwave cooking oven, I didn't have a range. You can just plug it in. It's that, like a portable unit. Well, I, the, the, the microwave was fixed, mm -hmm. but I had a hot plate. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, they wanted to cook something, and so that's how I, exactly. you know, uh, fulfilled but, my, my situation with my folks. I think maybe what they were alluding to was that the main house couldn't have a second kitchen. So you can have another dwelling, a separate, you can even have a junior ADU that's attached to the mm -hmm. house. It has to be completely self-sufficient. You can turn one of your bedrooms into a junior ADU. It's a separate self-sufficient unit with a separate entrance, separate kitchen, separate bathing, mm -hmm. cooking facility. But if you're just calling your main dwelling, they won't allow you to have two kitchens. They would require you to have a junior ADU as an attached to your main house or have a separate detached ADU and you can have a second kitchen in those situations. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it, it, it is subject to local regulation like the downstairs had its own access for example. Okay. And uh, but I know that that in Brevard County they you know they wouldn't have allowed me to do a second kitchen. So. I've done that a lot for clients. Just yeah. have a plug-in induction stove that's just right. a countertop, a small microwave, right. a small under-counter refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So it's not a permanent fixture, mm -hmm. but you can still allow for the kitchen items, just not as a permanent installation. Right. And that's how you get around that. Right. 
Yeah, you're in California, you said, I'm right? in California, yeah, right. correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next one. Hi, good morning. Hi. Can you tell me more about the uh, multifamily or the uh, multiple housing communities that you've seen or your experience in that? Very interested in that, thank you. Yes, um, so there's two issues with that. Primary, it's regarding zoning because most properties are single family zoning, which is very prohibitive to two dwellings. And the rest of them are like in my jurisdiction in California, it's open space or rural agricultural. There's really not many allowed zones for multiple dwellings. So in my local jurisdiction in Santa Paula, the city planner is creating a housing element, which is part of the general plan. I, I can get into the details of that, but I don't want to bore you. But the housing element, you can revise according to what is still compliant with the general plan. And so what, he, what the city planner is proposing in the housing element is not dictating how many dwellings are on the property, but really how much square footage is allowed on the property, complying with the setbacks and the height restrictions. So for instance, if you are allowed 5,000 square feet on a parcel, why, do you, why should you be restricted to only two dwellings if those two dwellings equal 1,000 square feet? So what he's saying is, if the maximum square footage, you know, regarding height and the setbacks and um, the volume, if you can meet that volumetric requirement, why not have multiple units meeting that volumetric requirement so that, you know, you can have multiple units but still be within that square footage or volume. And that's the way we're getting around allowing for multiple dwellings on the single family zones. Because I think it's really, I, I know a lot of people, clients who want to live with other extended members in a separate dwelling, but not necessarily in the house. But it's, it's not allowing them with the single family zoning. And another aspect is the tiny house community where you have 10 to 20 units. Those are typically allowed in like commercial zones and urban infill. So there's a lot of density. Um, and it's still hard to come by because those are usually for apartments and large you know, planned unit developments. What I'm proposing is individual detached units with multiple units on one parcel. So that's what I'm working with, with the city planner to see how we can work that zoning within the local ordinance. You're welcome. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate